Hey guys, I'm Duan here. Um, so, in today's videos, I wanted to address some of the comments that have been sent to me. And one of the comments that's been, that was asked to me is, what do people perceive of you in the States after your Peace Corps experience? And uh, really, there's a ton of answers here. Um, I think initially, people think it's kind of cool. You went and did something that you know very few people have done. Um, you lived on your own for two years. And if you're like most Peace Corps volunteers, you're very young, 22, 23 years old, um, just out of college. You had to learn another language, live in a village, no electricity, no running water. People were, a lot of people right away were going to say, like, wow, I could never do that. That's crazy. <laughs> um, besides that, so in my experience, after I, uh, my Peace Corps contract was done, I went home and uh, to what would people would call a small town in California. And people were interested. They, they knew I had gone out. They knew I had traveled. I had uploaded a few pictures. And there was some curiosity. Um, they would, uh, those typically say things like, oh, like you didn't get this in Africa, did you? Or you didn't get this in uh, Guinea, did you? It's like, no, no, and like you try to create these stories uh, or you try to um, tell them like how things were different. And uh, again, there's some curiosity to it, but for me, I didn't find too many people were too articulate. And that's just because my town, you know, there weren't too many people that left um, that didn't really have the greatest education there or they'd gone right into the workforce which were physical labor like distribution centers construction and so they um, weren't the type of people that would be too interested in getting out um, or at least be aware of what sort of differences were there so that kind of explains like why some of the questions I got from my hometown weren't too articulate um, but there was never anything that was um, insulting they weren't like oh you shouldn't have gone there or anything like that no they were just like wow that was cool that's interesting uh can you tell me a little bit more but uh, eventually it just uh they run out of questions very quickly it's i think it just has to do with you know not something they were thinking about uh having a conversation over with my friends at usc the university of southern california they were a little bit more interested, but again, these were people that had been working, you know, anywhere from 50 to 80 hours a week. Uh, they were glad to see me. They knew that I had done something different. Um, they had seen a few pictures. Uh, they were a little bit more informed about my conditions in Guinea. And so they were able to precise, uh, ask more precise questions. Um, but again, they're People are just busy, and if it's not something that is really relevant to them, they're going to move on past it. People are looking into the future, uh, so there's differences like that. Meanwhile, in Washington, D.C., I do find myself talking more about my Peace Corps experiences, uh, just because when I start speaking French with someone, they'll start asking, like, oh, why do you speak French? Like, oh, you're a Peace Corps volunteer. Oh, let's talk about that. That's cool. Like, your French is a little bit different than mine. Like, it's interesting. Where does it come from? Um, there's also a ton of Peace Corps volunteers in Washington, D.C. And so it comes up quite often at work even where we just want to kind of compare our stories and see how different programs, different countries were different or similar. And because there's so many Peace Corps volunteers here, there's also a lot of young professionals who are interested in joining Peace Corps. Uh, they want to know like if it's the right choice for them. And so there's even a younger person in my office who wants to join Peace Corps and she's been asking me questions too. Um, so that's just because Washington DC is a very international city. There's people who here who are very more, much more aware of Peace Corps. Uh, it has a huge building downtown and well not downtown, but in Farragut, Foggy Bottom area, not too far away from the State Department. And again, just it's just about awareness. In terms uh, professional perceptions. Um, typically, recruiters like Peace Corps volunteers because they show that they are willing to take challenges. They're willing to learn a lot. Um, they have high endurance. And they think that's someone that can be taught how to do something. And so recruiters do like Peace Corps volunteers. 
where recruiters don't like Peace Corps volunteers is Peace Corps has a very, uh, it's, it's very lax on oversight. And so you'll, you'll see that, that some recruiters, they'll look at you and say like, oh, you did two years of Peace Corps. So what did you actually do? And can you prove that you actually did all this work? Did you write reports? Did you um, develop good professional skills? You know, can you, can you manage a project worth a million dollars? And that's a tougher question um, because unless you were taking really good notes, unless you were pushing yourself, working on good uh, projects as a Peace Corps volunteer, you might not be able to say the answer that they want. And so some recruiters even said they don't want Peace Corps to appear as work experience on the resume. They want it to appear as some other sort of experience. Um, that's, that's a perception in the, in the minority, but still it's out there. You just have to be, if you want to present your Peace Corps experience as something good, something professional, then be prepared to talk about your Peace Corps experience in full, um, what you learned by, from certain projects, and how it made you a better person and a better professional. And that will increase people's perception of you professionally. Yeah. All right. Take care, guys.